Hello my fellow chairs, welcome back to Mission Tree Only, the series where we look at a nation's mission tree in its entirety without expanding outside that mission tree. Today we are playing as the nation of the Mamlux, or as I like to call them, the Mammer Jammers, and their mission tree centers around developing all of Egypt and using that as your base to go ahead and reunite the Caliphate as you expand into North Africa, into Iberia, also into Persia, Arabia, even a little bit into Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa. And of course, the main one of the main focal points of that mission tree is dealing with the Ottomans, who were the ones that ended up forcing the Mamluks to collapse. Now, the Mamluks have some pretty decent ideas. I actually really like their ideas. Obviously, they're not as good as the Ottomans, but they do keep you relatively on par with them. If you play your cards right, Vassal swarm them, attack the Ottomans at the right, most opportune time, you can very easily handle the Ottomans. Oh, and of course there's the strategy where you know CB Byzantium, build up more boats than the Ottomans have, and blockade the Ottomans to be trapped over here in the Balkans. I mean, there is also that option, obviously we're not going to be going for that option, because this is mission tree only. But let's go ahead and talk about these Mamluk ideas. They do have 10% cavalry combat ability, 25% trade steering, and 25% providential trade power modifier, along with global trade power, trade range, trade efficiency, prestige, manpower recovery speed, discipline, production efficiency, and stability cost modifier. And on top of that, you also start out in a pretty good position as you have three subjects. You're guaranteeing Medina and Cyprus, and you get an event to go ahead and vassalize Cyprus once their ruler dies. And with Medina, if you just simply diplo vassalize them, they merge. And with Medina, if you diplo vassalize these guys, they merge with the Jaws. Now, without wasting any more time, let's get right into it as the Mammer Jammers. So, as soon as we join into the game as the Mamluks, we are greeted by this event administering the Northern Territories, which has to deal with our subject of Syria. Syria, at the very start, is very disloyal. We go with this, it makes them even more disloyal, but we get a core on all their provinces. However, if we go with this option, we lose legitimacy and prestige, but they are a little bit more easy to handle. I mean, right now they're at 50 Liberty Desire. I think there's also another thing here as well. Yeah, where we want their Liberty Desire to be below 25%. And while this option typically seems like the better option because you're getting those cores and it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and integrate them, I'm going to go with this one. And as I mentioned, there is actually quite a big mission tree as the Mamluks. You have some of these that are, pertain towards trade and naval superiority in the Mediterranean. These which guide you towards conquering Anatolia and of course getting into the Balkans and all that stuff. Yeah, we actually get permanent claims on the Balkans. And then these are all about conquering the rest of of the Middle East and North Africa, Iberia and Iran, Persia region. And of course, here's all the development stuff and even more trade stuff. And also, if you really wanted to, you could also reform into Egypt, which obviously that's what we're going to be doing along the way. But that's going to but Egypt is really good for playing tall. They also have a lot of western mechanics as well too, even some western units that you get access to. But as of right now, we're going to go ahead and focus on some of these other missions like Northern Territories where we have to have at least an admin advisor, one stab, or focus on admin, and Syria needs to be loyal, and then we get a bunch of permanent claims on Anatolia. Meanwhile, if we do this, if we just diplo vast Medina, as I mentioned earlier, the fate of the Holy Cities happens where these two merge into one and then we get a bunch of permanent claims on Arabia and that allows us to just strengthen ourselves pretty easily. These missions right here is all about conquering into Iraq and Persia. And these down here we have to wait until we get to a certain, you know, I think it's Admin Tech 4 or 5 or Diplotech 4 or 5 where we actually get Marketplace. We also get access to the Mamluk, Cavalry and Infantry. I'm not really going to focus on the infantry we're gonna do the cavalry but uh you know they they give you reinforced speed plus 33 percent even more army drill gain modifier which is actually pretty decent and the morale damage plus 10 percent that's why i want to focus on cavalry with these guys so then that way they do the most damage during the shock phase and if you look at formation or formable nations in our decisions and policies tab 
as I mentioned, we could go towards Egypt, which requires us to have admin tech 18, or we could do it in our mission tree and actually form it whenever. I mean, I've been able to do it all the way up to admin tech 10. As for Arabia, we need our administrative tech to be at least 18. But again, if we go through our mission tree, you don't have to wait until 18 to actually do it. And it requires us to own a ton of land. We can also afford quite a few advisors at the start here. So let's go ahead and get a few of our advisors. We're going to go with the stab cost guy, diplo rep guy, and discipline guy. Now for Medina, I'm going to go ahead and improve relations with them. We're going to diplo vassalize them. For my guy Syria, just for this mission, just to get it done, let's placate the rulers. We're now going to be able to complete this mission, get a bunch of prosperity progress here, and get our permanent claims all on the Ottomans. As I mentioned earlier too, the Mamluks, typically you want to vassal swarm the Ottomans, um, and you can pretty much vassalize everybody around you pretty easily, literally like almost anybody except for these guys. And um, you know, that's how I would typically take down the Ottomans. In the case of this game, however, because it's a mission tree only, we kind of don't have the luxury of that. Though, I mean, once I do vassalize Medina and complete that, I mean, I technically could just go ahead and vassalize all these guys because I do have a permanent claim on Arabia. So maybe that is what we will do. So once I go ahead and complete that, I'll start diplo vassalizing a bunch of people over here just so, so I could have all of the additional troops to beat up on the Ottomans. And speaking of subjects, I don't know what happened with... Yeah, Syria just got Ottomans, even though they were extremely loyal. You guys just saw I had them under 25 Liberty Desire. I don't know why they just became disloyal within two days of the game starting, but okay. And because I have a ton of my Mamluk units here, I could complete this mission, get new estate agendas for the Mamluks, and we get a bunch of permanent claims over here which I'm actually working on diplo vassalizing Fazan right now. Finally, within the first two years, I vassalized Medina. We get our permanent claim on Arabia and the fate of the holy cities. So I can either, again, Hejaz gets all of Medina. They both exist and we get prestige or they just get a bunch of development. I'm going to go with this top option so I can get an additional vassal. It strengthens my one. So that sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and start diplo vassalizing a lot of these guys over here because again this is going to be our bread and this is going to be the way that we actually handle the Ottomans. And I'm okay with going over my foursome. Alright I think we are officially ready to attack the Ottomans here. I have my vassal swarm of Arabia ready to go and of course Fazan. And uh, this is going to allow me to get Syria back on my side. And they're also locked in a war for Afghani independence, which I'm sure is it's going to end very, very soon. But still, I need to go ahead and attack these guys. Ooh, even Tlemensen or uh, Akpoyumu would not join, only Tlemensen. So let's go ahead and do this for this province here. And let's hope for the best. While I'm at it, I'm also going to go ahead and attack Ramazan because, I mean, why not? I mean, this allows me to just connect my land because, you know, we're going to be taking quite a bit of land from the Ottomans just to weaken them. Here goes our very first battle against the Ottomans. Should be able to win this. We got 40,000 troops. They only got 15,000. Even then, it was still a tough war or a tough battle. So our ruler just died, but... I got an even better Syrian guy who's a 635. I'll gladly take that any day of the week. I got the Ottomans down to 15,000 troops. That's because of some, uh, they marched all the way back from Persia to my subjects, siege this down, and that was the only province they could retreat to. So, yeah, this is their whole army right here. I'm hoping somebody like maybe Hungary over here decides, you know what, it's time to invade, or maybe even like. Poland. I'd literally rather deal with anyone else other than the Ottomans all game. Tier 2 government reform. We're going to go with a unique one here, Dewan al Qas, which gives us construction costs and dev costs because we do have those development missions in Egypt. And it looks like the Ottoman army, I just beat them here in Coachelli. Uh, I think we're going to stack wipe them. Oh my god, we just stack wiped them. So they only have 3k guys. Yes, Ottomans are done, guys. 
Ottomans are done. So while I was in this war with the Ottomans, I started war against Caraman. Go ahead, full annex them. Who's gonna care? Well, just the Ottomans. And as for my war with the Ottomans, we're taking whatever I have a claim on. So we got a lot of stuff we gotta take. I'm probably gonna mainly go for these forts here. This is what our peace deal with the Ottomans is gonna look like. We're taking their entire coastline. So I could just focus on building up boats, and then we could blockade them in the submission in the next war. And of course, I'm going to be taking uh, over 200 ducats. Hey, it's actually not too bad. It's just the countries up here that really care, but nobody else does. And right now, the only country I could rival is France. And uh, even then, they're 34% weaker than us, apparently. Would you look at that? The Ottomans are taking out their frustrations on the Byzantines over here. So rip Byzantium. So now that our next war against the Ottomans is going to be way easier, I'm going to go ahead and begin integrating some of these subjects. So, yeah, that means I'm going to have to take nobility integration policy. That's going to upset a lot of these guys, but that's what I got to do. First idea group time. We're going to go ahead and pick up Diplo ideas because we do have a lot of land that we're going to have to conquer. And, of course, I'm going to be using a ton of vassals and also the province war score cost is good. It also helps us keep the AE down. Tier 3 government reform, we're going to go with representatives of the crown. Alright, we're going to go ahead and attack the Ottomans again. For the same province I didn't take in the last war. Hopefully we're able to take even more, like all this stuff this time. Then this way we can just focus on the Balkans. Actually, I forgot I actually have all these boats, so let's wait. Alright, so apparently I completed the naval enterprise, so I'll build up to my force summit my naval force limit and have at least 35 ships and Mamluk fleet happens uh, gets access to naval doctrine galley fleet combat ability merchant vessels warships or transports we're gonna go with that top one and now we're gonna go ahead and attack the Ottomans we have naval supremacy over these guys and um, yeah it should be a lot easier than that first one and all the Ottomans can do is just sit across the strait and just watch as I burn down the rest of Anatolia I'm also going to start a side war against Aquayonu. Might as well. We have a claim on them, and we're about to get permanent claims on the rest of our country after this war. My Ottoman war, we're just going to do something like this. Not going to be able to take any money, but... Or actually, I'll wait until their capital of Edirn is taken by me, and then I'll make peace with them. With Edirn now under my control, we're going to take this type of peace deal. And, of course, a lot of money. That's looking pretty good. I like the look of that Mamlukian or Mamlukian Anatolia. So let's go ahead and complete this. Our ruler gains one mil, and we get permanent claims on the entire Balkans region. I can now complete Subjugate the Balex, giving me permanent claims on a couple more areas, along with gaining an additional Monarch point. And uh, yeah, once we get Cyprus through that event, which should be very soon because Charlotte is kind of a trash ruler, uh, we'll be able to get that. We'll be able to get uh, complete this mission and get our permanent claims on the Thracian area, which is this right here. I think now is a pretty good time to actually go ahead and invade the Korakoyunu. Get attack them for the province of Erzurum here. Or we could even do Araka, but we'll do this. The Korakoyunu, despite having no manpower, is actually putting up a really tough fight right now. They're actually more challenging than the Ottomans as of right now. These guys just will not go down. Except finally, after that battle, where that leaves them with less than 14,000 troops. But still. I finally dev up my capital, so we could complete this mission. Then our trade gets bumped up, which is very nice. Now it's a level 3 center of trade. From there, we just need to get a bunch of workshops. Literally, a lot of these missions just require you to have, like, tech so you can build these buildings. In what was had to be one of the more challenging, difficult wars I've fought in a long time, we can finally make peace with these guys, get 82% war score on them, get all of Baghdad, all of the Ezerum stuff, or Erzurum, and from that, I could also embrace the Renaissance. Meaning, I'm about to shoot back up to the second greatest power in the game again. 
But even more important, I could complete the March to Baghdad mission, giving me even more permanent claims, along with a really cheap level 3 admin advisor. And yeah, pretty much we got claims on all this. I don't know why we don't have claims here. This is just weird why we don't have claims on Kurdistan. I hope we get claims here, otherwise it's just going to look weird. On the Persia region. Oh yeah. No, that's Anatolia. Do we not get claims here? That's, that's weird. Oh, we don't get any claims right here. And here's the freaking event. The King of Cyprus. So Charlotte's still alive. Good old Charlotte. We're going to send an embassy to her. And there we go. We got Cyprus as a vassal. We can complete this mission and get 100 splendor. And our ruler gets plus one diplo. Also get permanent claims over here in Thrace. Once we conquer that area, we get heart of an empire. I'm going to go ahead and launch a war against Tanis. They're guaranteed by Portugal, who has been expanding very heavily in the region. But I think this is my opportunity to actually get Portugal to break some alliances. Second idea group time, we're going to go ahead and pick up offensive ideas. I fed my subject Tripoli, most of Tunisia, so now we can complete the city of caravans, which actually changed the monument in Tunis. Or the right here to a tier two monument and then uh, we also get permanent claims on the Maghreb region all right I'm gonna also kick the Ottomans completely out of the Balkans because uh, everybody else is getting a piece of them I want a piece of them as well and the stupid Venetians attacked them and it just caused them to collapse the Serbia Moldavia and the Great Horde even attacked them and yes this is Great Horde Anatolia so the Doge in Venice actually got uh, excommunicated, which means the mines and the knights would not actually defend these guys. The only person that would would be England. And I can also call my pal Hungary to help me out here. We'll go ahead and attack him for Gallipoli. I'm going to go ahead and start my golden era, just because I feel like this is going to be the era that's easiest for us to get all the bonuses. And plus, you know, we own the vast majority of the stuff we already need. Obviously, it's just a matter of pushing into Persia now and conquering all of Arabia. In our war against the Venetians, we're going to do something like this. This is going to give us a pretty sizable coalition with all the European nations, but honestly, I don't really care. We'll be okay. Famous last words. We can go ahead and complete this mission, Heart of an Empire, where we get Tier 3 Integrated Ottoman Officials Government Reform, which allows us to give Pashas. We can make Constantinople our new capital or just for this bottom option which honestly i'm thinking we're gonna go with that pasha's one and i'm kind of glad i did because now i could actually see the skills of whatever ruler that i'm choosing to elect as my new sultan all right so i just diplo vassalized yemen actually i force vassalized yemen took this land over here i completed the unite arabia mission apparently by owning at least 30 provinces we now get a permanent claim on Ormuz, and our merchant guilds now get the hydraulic rights. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and chill for the next 5-6 years, get our manpower all the way back up, uh, focus on rebuilding the economy, because inflation it's just a number, but I have a lot of buildings I need to build. And also, this gives me a chance to actually annex a lot of my subjects. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for... 1530 to roll around I at some point I will attack the Rasids give them all the Yemen that's really about it in terms of expansion that we're gonna do for a little while here I finally am getting around to those economic missions I've been talking so much about so like Alexandrian trade build marketplaces in Alexandria Rashid and Dumyat we get indebted and merchant guild will no longer take away our mercantilism and constructing trade buildings in a province will actually give it five prosperity from there, we're on to Highway of an Empire. Pretty much we need to make sure that some of these provinces... Like, th this allows us actually to build the Suez Canal in the 1500s, pretty much. We have to make sure that these provinces are at least around 10 dev, have a certain amount of buildings and stuff. Then we could actually build the Suez Canal. This one here, uh, we need to dev up all these provinces, or at least have one building in all of them. And finally, this one here, these provinces just need to have prosperity. Then we get grain trade in Egypt. 
tier 5 government reform, we're going to go with the Ghazi Warriors one. I can also complete this mission, Qas al Sultan, which gives us 5 crown land ownership. And we also get access to the export grain economic diplomatic action. Now, I've never really messed around with this. Let's look at this. So, like Tripoli here, costs us 50 admin. We gain to mercantilism. And until the death of their ruler, uh, they get additional supply limit, death costs, and national rust. So, that's actually pretty nice, like for uh, subjects and whatnot. Same thing if I give it to Hungary, it's going to be about the same thing. Third idea group, we're going to go ahead and pick up admin ideas. It's a must, considering the size of our empire. With all the Yemen reunited, we get coffee out of Arabica, which uh, we can either go with this top option, allows us to grant the monopoly on coffee to our merchant guilds, or go with those mercantilism based production every province with coffee. See, I like this bottom one because I don't like the monopolies privileges at all. I, I think they're like my least favorite thing in the entire game. I think I just clicked on the monopoly one, didn't I? I did. I totally did. Oh, that sucked. Why would I do that? Probably because I was t just talking about it. In a war with Ormuz, we're going to do something like this. I'm going to force feed my vassals of Hassa in Yemen. I really don't feel like spending any admin on this stuff right now. You know, I was just thinking about attacking the Great Horde. And I was like, oh, I see that they have the Ottomans as a subject. And I was like, oh. And, <laughs> and they're actually Diplo annexing the Ottomans right now. That's freaking hilarious. All right, so this war with the Great Hordes, it's it's over. So I'm going to release out Jandar, Trebizond, Aretna, cancel their overlordship of both the Ottomans and Germany on here, and they're just going to have the province of Bolu. Oh, and I'll get a little bit of money. That has to be like one of the most cursed peace deals I've done in a little bit here. And the only reason why I'm not taking land here is, well, because I don't have claims here. I have no mission... Uh, stuff that gives me claims here. There's no claims I get over here and stuff. It, it's weird Finally, I could complete the highway of an empire get the Suez Canal constructed over here Yeah, it's it's a work in progress I'm two mil techs ahead of Korakuyunlu, so I might as well take advantage of that. We're gonna go ahead and attack them for I think in a province over here like maybe Yerevan it's amazing how much easier a war is when you actually have three mil tech advantage over somebody. And not only that, we have Diplo ideas, so that 20% province war score cost is huge. You can actually get a 100% peace deal that looks something like this. Everything that we have a claim on when it comes to Korakoyono. And on top of that, we can actually become an empire now, so all this stuff is our accepted culture. I can also know... Complete the campaign into Tabriz mission, giving us a permanent claim on the Persia region, and our ruler is now strict. So this is exactly what we have to conquer over here now. So I completed the Cultivate the Delta mission here, which just required us to basically dev up a few provinces in the Delta area over here at least four times, or wait until those states are prosperous. Then we get the Grain Trade in Egypt event, which allows us to choose between two different options. Either focus on spreading our wealth, which means Nile estuaries will be expanded, granting the following bonuses, base production development, local trade power, and trade power modifier, or we get granaries of the Mediterranean will be expanded, giving us local goods produced plus three, and we'll be able to use the export grain diplomatic action with two more countries. So granary of the Mediterranean already gives us plus two local goods produced. I mean, it bumps it up by an additional one. But also, the trade power here is very nice. But to be honest with you, I kind of like this for that local goods produced. I mean, when we get into manufactories and all that stuff, the production is going to be a huge uh, boost to our economy. I began the annexation of my subject, Syria. And now I'm going to go ahead and attack the nation of Ormos over here. We're going to full annex these guys. I might just take all this for myself. Or I may, may release out Oman and then 
speed them all these provinces and annex it later using Diplo points. I do value my admin way more than Diplo most of the time, so yeah, we may end up going that route. With Ormas knocked out of the way, we actually get a center of trade level increase in Ormas, and we actually get permanent claims on the Gulf Coast, Mogistan, and Makran areas, which I swear we already have. Because uh, all this is part of the Persia region, the only area being different is the Makran. But yeah, it really didn't change much. We're going to go ahead and attack the nation of Yas next. And again, just feed that straight to our boy Oman. Another day, another war. We're going to go ahead and attack Mushasha now. For their capital, we should be able to full annex these guys and continue our expansion into Persia. Which, I mean, Afghanistan... <laughs> they're about to reunite the Timurids. we got to prevent that from happening. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm in this war against Mushasha. Might as well make a few more nations hate me and go ahead and invade Afghanistan. They're allied to Great Horde, Chagatai, Bengal, and Delhi, all of which who are way behind me in terms of tech. I'm like two, even in some, in, I think, the case of Bengal, I'm three mil techs ahead of them. We're going to go ahead and attack them from Mogistan right here. I'm going to use my claim because it will be a little bit less Diplo power too. By conquering Mushasha, I now own all the provinces in the Khuzestan and Basra area, so now I can complete trade in Basra. Or trade in Basra. You know me, for the next 20 years, trade efficiency costs pro promote mercantilism and gives us even more mercantilism. We are so close to unifying Islam here too. Finally, after knocking out all of Afghanistan's allies, I could actually get everything I have a permanent claim on. Thank you, Diplo Ideas, for that, but this is only going to be 87% war score. So I'm tired of the knights always raiding my country, plus I have a mission to actually take them over, so we did it peacefully. We're going to just peacefully vassalize the knights and complete the Bastion of the Knights mission, giving us even more army tradition and prosperity in a couple of our states in Egypt. Because my war against Afghanistan actually drained most, if not all, my manpower, I was just going to sit around and chill, but honestly, I feel like now's the perfect time to go ahead and invade Serbia. Maybe even uh, vassalize Bosnia without co belligerenting them. And uh, we could actually get all of the Balkans, well, most of the Balkans that we have a claim on, because the game wants us to conquer the entire thing. So. Yeah, at some point we'll have to invade our former ally of Hungary. So, uh, I think I messed up by vassalizing both Bosnia and full annexing Serbia, because, uh, everybody big hates me right now. <laughs> Fourth idea group time. You know, I'm kind of leaning towards economic ideas. Or even, like, humanist or maybe religious ideas. I don't... I have offensive ideas. At some point, I'm going to be going with quality. So maybe economic with that discipline. And obviously, the boost towards our economy would be great, too. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. Tier 6 government reform. We're going to go with aristocratic court for the improved relations and diplorep. Because I finally integrated my subject to Yemen, all my subjects now have less than 10 liberty desire. And now I can actually form Egypt. Which is exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do. We're going to lose five stab, but that's okay. Otherwise, you could go with this one. and That's whatever. But this is the good one right here. And Egyptian ideas. Oh, man, they're so good. You get trade efficiency, admin efficiency, a free policy slot, dev cost, monthly military power plus one, merchant guild loyalty, production efficiency, land fire damage, in a max general fire plus one ships can repair when in coastal sea zones which is actually very underrated and you get global trade power on top of that you get access to these three buttons which allow you to actually westernize your army this is exactly what we need to do we need to westernize our nation and we basically get access to all the western troops and on top of that we actually get to keep all of the mamluk missions which before we go on to form arabia here uh, at admin tech 18 we are going to go ahead just like my persia mission tree only we're going to complete all these missions now we're going to form arabia and complete the remainder of their missions as well 
as the Egyptians, we also get a unique government called the Egyptian government. It has yearly innovativeness and yearly government power. So how this stuff works here, Egyptian westernization. We gain westernization if we just have high stability. We gain westernization based off of our ruler's monarch skill, along with a couple other things. Like in our capital of Cairo, we actually have a university that if we upgrade even more, we get it access to even more westernization and of course you want really high westernization because you get tech costs idea costs all of your estates are more loyal more innovativeness stab costs and tolerance of true fate and when it's maxed out your stab cost does go up by 25 percent but that minus 10 tech costs idea costs nearly innovativeness is mwah. I'm going to go ahead and attack Kora Kleonu. They're still in a coalition against me, but it only consists of uh, Greece and Mazanderan over here. And once I conquer basically everything that they have in Persia along with Mazanderan, I can go ahead and complete another mission. So, yeah, I kind of need this area right now. Alright, this war against Kora Kleonu. We're going to do something like this. I can't take this stuff because, again, I don't have claims here, which is so weird. Honestly, I'm tempted to just do it, just to clean up these borders, though, because it's so bad. But for right now, we'll just stick to this. Alright, so now I can actually complete this mission, Lion and the Crescent, which just requires us to own at least 25 provinces in the Persia region, own all of Tehran and Isf Isfahan, and then we get architecture in Safavid, Persia. So we get construction costs, construction time and dev cost for the next 40 years 30 40 years then we're just on to eclipse morocco which basically requires us to own all of north africa here once we do that we get an event which actually allows us to rebuild a palace here in fuzz now we're on to the unify all of islam stuff here which requires us to own even more stuff <laughs> like in sicily over here and even the province of Thada over here. I Oh yeah, and I need to own Samarkand. And I guess I also need to own this province of Dagestan. And then I could actually form, unify Islam and become the Caliphate. So when it comes to the westernization stuff, you have to get your westernization all the way up to 100. Then you can click any one of these three buttons. Pretty much, you go through all this. You get an even more gov cap, all that stuff. Do this one, you get more good stuff this one you can adopt western units and this is the one that we're mainly going to invest into so we gained our army tradition we're going to start getting even more yearly army tradition and the last time we click that button we're going to adopt western units which is just overpowered because i got the because i got my army up to 30 percent army professionalism and i've reached at least five government reforms i can complete this mission here getting modernized Iriasia for a tier 5 government reform and we get 50 government reform progress now this one allows our Mamluk special units to get an additional 5% discipline and recruiting generals increases the loyalty of our nobility by 2% and our each advisor will grant yearly innovativeness per level oh so yeah we're gonna go with this all right, so I'm going to go ahead and scornfully insult the Venetians. I actually have a larger fleet than them. I can complete mercantile relationships. And because I did this with an aggressive stance, I get strong Mamluk regulations, trade power in Alexandria for the next 20 years, plus mercantilism. And with this, I just need to build three coastal defenses or naval battery buildings and have at least 25 light ships. We get 100 Diplo power and gain an Admiral with 70 tradition. That's not the worst. And then from there, we have to have either naval professionalism, naval ideas, maritime ideas. We have to have at least 200 ships and have the largest navy in the Mediterranean. And then we can complete the mission that we actually could complete right now, which is be a great power rank number two at least, or a hegemon, which we are number one right now. I can finally complete Karimi Merchants. We have a trade advisor of at least level 3. Merchant Guilds, loyalty above 70 or greater. 
or in my case, I have the most trade power in Alexandria, 51% or more. So I can actually get cloves being produced here in my capital of Cairo, which is a very, very powerful trade good, 20% local trade power. I could also complete this mission apparently for having high mercantilism above 30, either completed trade ideas or no Western tech country is training cloves, so that's good. And trade node value in Alexandria is at least 30. And we get an explorer worth 75 tradition, merchant guilds estate gets 20 loyalty, and we get access to the foreign Mamluk expeditions, which this actually gives us a colonist and settler chance and all that. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take that. I wish I completed that earlier so I could actually get over here to Indonesia a little bit sooner. That's fine. So Britain just attacked Austria for a secession war, and that's because the Commonwealth just went under Austria. That's disgusting. All right, I'm going to go ahead and complete two missions here. I took out four loans just to do this, but take that and this mission. We're going to go with, so with this, we could spend 4,000 ducats. It's state madrasas, government reform. Each advisor generates nearly innovativeness per level. Actually, that's pretty good. I think we're going to go with this one for the innovativeness just right off the bat. And we're going to go for this one here, which just changes the monument level of the university in our capital plus gives us innovativeness finally i completed presence in Aden, having 51 percent trade power in this area plus i have a bunch of marketplaces trade depots and province center of trades uh level two i can also do now by completing this mission i get private trade fleets and it will double it ship trade power and cost no influence, plus gives me even more mercantilism. Finally, I'm getting to the last stage of Egyptian westernization, and I can adopt Western units. Which, as you guys can see, I no longer have the Muslim units. I now have all the Western units. Like, all the way across the board, and that's disgustingly strong. All right, so I was able to vassalize both Ternat and Tador. And you may be asking yourself, why did you do that? And that's because I had to complete this mission right here, reach the Spice Islands, which actually requires us to own these two provinces. We now get one mercantilism for every Cloves province we, or our subjects own. So like three mercantilism. It's really not that worth it of a mission, but eh, oh well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and attack Bosnia, who is guaranteed by Hungary, and I'm going to make Hungary break their alliance with Spain and Portugal. At the very least, Spain needs to go. And of course, Austria is going to be the one to invade Hungary now. I should have just made them break their alliance with Portugal, to be honest with you. Oh, no. I have a bad feeling. Yeah, Austria is probably going to take all this. This is going to be really bad for me. So I can go ahead and form Arabia, but we're not going to do that just yet. Just because, again, I still have to finish up all these Egyptian Mamluk missions here. I'm going to go ahead and attack Hungary. Though I'm assuming Austria is probably going to take the vast majority of their country. But still, I might as well try it. Like for Zeta or something. Especially since their allies would not join. Would you look at that? Sure enough, Austria took all the stuff that I wanted. Well, I mean, actually it's not as bad as I thought they only own like five or six provinces but yeah I said I have to reconquer Serbia and Bosnia who I just wiped out okay so I'm gonna briefly enact naval professionalism here just so we can complete the Pearl of the Mediterranean where we have to have at least 200 ships naval professionalism or naval ideas or maritime ideas which I'm not taking either of those ideas largest navy in the mediterranean in alexandria has to have a shipyard or a grand shipyard then we get uh naval professionalism reform actually allows admirals to generate an additional navy tradition and here we just need to be the second greatest power in the world which we are I don't know why that mission's not activating here Oh, I have to be the number one. My bad. 
Alright, so I just blew a bunch of my hit book points just to complete this mission. Get five innovativeness. Westernizing any aspect of our government will refund five Egyptian westernization. That's actually pretty nice. And we get 25 Egyptian westernization. So the entire upper half of our mission tree is done. Now we just have to conquer the Maghreb region, unify Islam, take 20 provinces in Ethiopia. At our tier 8 government reform, we get Karimi stations, which allows us to actually place trade ports. So I lucked out because Spain decided to invade Papal States. They lost their war against the Papal States, but they're so beat up and they no longer desire Portugal as an ally. So now I can finally invade Portuguese Maghreb, but I could probably take the majority of it. This will also plunge me into a war against Ethiopia, who's allied to both Portugal and France. So yeah, we're, we're about to expand real good, everybody. Oh, and I also forgot to mention Portugal's getting beat up by Austria, who's trying to take more of Hungary. So there's also that. They have no manpower whatsoever. In this war against Portugal, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to give Mazab over here the rest of their state. I'm going to take all this, release out Algiers, but first I'm going to vassalize Morocco over here using the uh, distance between our borders so I can use them to reclaim all their cores and next time I'll be fighting Portugal using imperialism CB. This will set up a truce. Actually not that long. Uh, about an 8 year truce. I'll gladly take that. I was looking at Portugal's allies just getting a gauge of like you know who's their ally all that stuff. I mean for one what I just noticed just now is that they're Hunyadi. On top of that, they're allied to Christian Japan. There's a Christian Japan in my game. Now you may be asking yourself, Chairman, why are you at war with Transoceana? You don't have any claims on these guys whatsoever. And you would be correct. I have zero claims to these guys. However, I have to complete the Unify Islam mission, which requires me to own some provinces I don't get claims on, such as Samarkand. Or over here in Shaban, Sicily, and then over in Spain. So I kind of have to go a little bit outside the mission tree technically in order to complete this. Um, but I'm just going to pretty much take the states leading up to the whatever province I need in order to unify Islam. That's pretty much like some of the last missions that we have for the Mamluk mission tree, which is to unify Islam. Eclipse Morocco, so pretty much retake all the Morocco stuff. And soon enough, I'll get imperialism. And we'll just, we don't have any claims on Ethiopia, but uh, I need to own a lot of provinces down here. So guess what? That's what we're going to do. We're going to force feed my boy Elodia here, all of whatever over here in Ethiopia. Get some nice borders here. Get maybe like one province to a doll. So yeah, the, for the areas where we don't get claims, that's kind of the plan. So in this war with Transoceana, we're going to go ahead and take this much land here. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is release out Khorasan because they have cores on Afghanistan here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start this imperialist war against Portugal. We're going to take some stuff from Ethiopia as well. I don't think this will really be that difficult of a war. The last war was extremely easy against these guys. Should be about the same, especially since Ethiopia is a lot weaker. And I think the majority of these numbers comes from Japan over there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and invade Ethiopia too, because that's just going to be another super easy war. Finally, Portugal will just surrender all of Maghreb to me, including these couple islands out here that we have permanent claims on. And yeah, I'm going to give all these to Morocco, but I got to finish up this war against Ethiopia first. But in the meantime, I can finally complete the mission, Eclipse Morocco. The Dar al Maksen happens. So we can begin the reconstruction, spending 2,000 ducats, get a bunch of production there. It becomes Egyptian, or it just gets a bunch of dev. We're going to go with this. And now we literally just have to unify Islam, and we can complete this mission. And now we're about to finish this one down here, pretty much. And we're just on to the center of the Islamic world. Oh, let's we'll look at that. Apparently, Portugal got called back into this war, which is stupid because 
Ethiopia never joined their defensive war, so that alliance should have just broke, but for whatever reason it stayed. That makes no sense, game. It makes no sense. With Ethiopia knocked out, we can now complete this mission, Beacon to Gondar. We can get new various flavor events with Ethiopia. If we kind of are like, hey, we're chill with these guys, or we can learn from their military and get the Kawa. I actually like this, but I do have that tier 5 for my Mamluk, so eh, I guess we'll go with this. So I did a big brain move here. I just vassalized my boy Shervan here. And uh, I'm going to be asking uh, Russia here for a bunch of cores back here. Because, yeah, I kind of need these. Finally, I can complete center of the Islamic world. I got my westernization at 90. No countries ahead of us in institution or tech. I completed innovative ideas. And now we get 750 innovativeness. And our rulers will adopt positive traits more frequently. I don't know if that was really worth it, but yeah, that, that's the mission we have to do. And now we're just down to unify Islam. I'm going to go ahead and attack Gujarat here because, well, I need Thada in order to unify Islam. So let's do this. This may be a very painful war because they have like 300,000 troops, but let's give it a go. Also, we're now on the final age, the age of revolutions. So yeah, we got a lot of work to do, but at least I'm an emperor. I have a ton of subjects, large capital, and a couple three-star generals, so at least that. Alright, I think it's finally time we invade Italy, and we get Sicily back from the Papal States. We're going to call him Brandenburg. Theoretically, this should be a steamroll of a war, but the Pope's troops are very, very strong. The last time I fought him was for Hungary, and they put up a really good fight, so... Again, theoretically we outnumber them, theoretically we should be winning this war no problem, but you never know with the Pope. So here we go, actually our very first battle against the Pope in the 18th century here. And sure enough, they got better morale than us. We got the better discipline and tactic. That morale is going to keep them in every single battle. It's going to be horrible. Mr. Pope Man over here has way too many forts. And if it's one thing that I learned from Game of Thrones, it's just use mercenaries. This is, this whole stack right here of 100,000 people, that's just all mercenaries. And you know what? They're going to go ahead and assault this fort because they're not my guy. So please, guys, take the freaking city. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. We got like two more forts that we have to get to just so I could take Sicily over here. This is ridiculous. Oh my god, I finally got across the strait. Stupid Papal States just would not leave my navy alone, man. I just could not get them to... I kept losing naval battle after naval battle against these guys. And we had the same amount of ships, but they have more heavy ships than me as a thing. I didn't have a single heavy ship. I know better than that. I had nothing but just galleys, and man, were they just... It was just whooping my navy's butt. Like, it was horrible. But finally, I got my mercenaries across. And we could finally win the stupid war. Out of this war, I literally just need these two provinces. It's literally all I needed. But because they were such a pain in the butt, I'm going to make them release out a couple nations. Now, honestly, I would be extremely happy if I was able to release out Naples. But I can't because, I mean, it's just way too expensive. Yeah, no matter what I do, it's way too expensive. So, go ahead and do this. War rep, release out Florence, Navino. We finally got these provinces down here. Okay, so my boy Russia called me into this war. I'm not invested in this war, I'm going to be honest with it. Uh, but instead, I want to get invested into a war with Spain here. And take all of southern Spain along with Sicily here so then that way I could finally unify Islam I also have to get like a core back for my subject here on Debent or Durbent and then once that's done I could literally unify Islam yeah I just need Cordoba and Durbent but might as well beat up on Spain I guess Russia got tired of me leaving the leaving the war and so they broke their alliance with me but jokes on them because they're like 
10,000 ducats in debt right now. So, um, yeah, rip to the Russians. Finally, I can make peace with Spain. This took way too long to do. This is actually, this war was actually a lot easier than I thought. And I kind of accredit it to taking defensive ideas as my last idea group just now. Not like last in the game, but one of my last ones. Um, because my morale is up to 7.0. Also, my economy is able to just handle so many mercs right now. As you guys can see, I'm down in the whole 130,000 manpower. But you know what? I got mercs. And that's all that matters. And that's what helps me win this war right now. I can take 50% uh, peace deal here. Oh man, that's, that's looking a lot better. Okay, so there was, there was an issue with my recording. Um, I didn't realize I was recording the wrong bit as I record in clips. And I missed the whole Russia war pretty much thing. But I got these cores back to Gazakamuk and Shirvan. Um, we formed the Caliphate, completed the Mamluk mission tree. And then now we are Arabia. And these are pretty much all the missions that we have done in the Arabian mission tree. And what I'm thinking right now is this is about where we're going to leave it off for today. And my logic behind it is if this video gets 800 likes, then I will play and start as the nation of Nejd over here and go for their Jihad achievement, which requires us to own over 500 provinces. Not only that, I will complete the entire mission tree as well because they do share the mission tree with Arabia as well. So if you guys want to see that, please leave a like on this video and I will make sure that we do that and stuff. And we will continue this this campaign, not in this game, but next time as Nejd. With all that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Chairman out.